All right, welcome back, everybody. It's Davis Spider Monkey 2A. Today we got our next matchup in our tournament. We got our 308. That's 150 grain. 150 grain versus our 243. That's 100 grain. And I'm here with my brother today, Scott. He knows way more about these firearms than I do. So, Scott, 308, what are the good points to it? So, with your 308, obviously you got 30 caliber. It's always a good standby for good penetration and knockdown. 308 is very good for ammo availability and versatility. So you can use it down to 110 grain, all the way up to 200 grain if your rifle will take it. Uh, it's always commercially available. You can buy it anywhere. If you want to reload, it's easy to reload for. And there's a wide scope of uh, bullets that you can use for any different type of game you'd want to be taking. Nice. Any downside to the 308? Um, compared to what we're going to shoot with the 243, the downside of the 308 is uh, recoil. So it's got a little bit more recoil than the 243 that we're going to compare it against. Uh, otherwise, there's not a whole lot of downsides to the 308. I agree. All right, 243, what are the good talking points? So very good talking points on the 243. For anybody who's an entry-level hunter, uh, a little bit recoil shy, the 243 is definitely a great choice. Super good penetrator, lots of good uh, options for factory-loaded ammunition, and it's almost available on any ammo shelf in any typical time frame. Maybe not right now. With the way things are, but generally speaking, you can buy 243 ammunition at any place that sells ammunition. Another good penetrating round, like I said, a wide scope of different bullets. If you want to go prairie dog in, the 243 can do it. If you want to shoot large game, it can do it. Uh, one thing I would say, the 243, you're going to want to really work with good shot placement. It is a little bit smaller diameter cartridge. So even if the penetration is the same and the bullet mushrooms out, you're still going to want to really focus on your shot placement, as always, but even a little more so with the 243. Definitely. And as you said before, uh, the recoil is mm -hmm. going to be a lot better than the 308. So there's your talking points on both. We got the same test as before. We got the milk jug test, and then we got our flour and meat test. Let's get after it. All right, guys. First up, we got our 243 water jug test. Let's get after it. All right, guys, now we're up on the 308. Let's see what happens. All right, guys, the 243, that was uh, pretty devastating. As you can see there, yeah, it uh, shattered that one pretty good. That do what you think it was going to do there, Scott? Yep, pretty well. <laughs> All right, and let's take a look at the 308. That absolutely, there is not much left of this at all. Round one, I'd have to say 308. I'm going to go with 308. Okay, yeah. Uh, let's get the flour lined up with the meat test, and let's see what happens. All right, first up, 243. Let's see what happens. All right, looked like it had some good knockdown power as I'm coming up on the meat here. Yeah, uh, looks pretty mangled. Okay, so we definitely passed through the first bag here. That's disgusting. Look at that. Just blew the entire bottom of that meat right out. I think that's what it probably would have looked like. So we'll set that to the side. All right, we are into the second bag after, but definitely no pass through. Let's see if we can't find that round in there. 
Maybe. That's disgusting. Not feeling it. All right, we'll get to digging around in that. Oh, oh, oh. Found a little chunk of it. I don't know, I'm not really feeling much else. I don't know. Do those uh, tend to shrapnel apart there, Scott? Or? Well, I mean, it's a lead soft tip True. bullet, so it definitely mushrooms out hard. If it's not a bonded mm. bullet, it can come apart a little bit. It's all the more reason why the shot placement's maybe a little more important, a little more important on this one, just because, you know, if it does come apart, it's not going to keep pushing through the way that you want it to out the other side. Yeah, we'll have to get to digging through that a little bit more. We just found a couple little pieces of shrapnel. I think the 308's going to rock it. Let's see what happens. All right, let's see what the 308 does. All right, that 308 definitely had a heck of a lot more knockdown on that one. It looked like it had real good penetration too. Let's set you down here. You can't see. All right, that first bag absolutely uh, destroyed it. Guys, I don't even know where the meat went. <laughs> right pretty right knee. Oh, there it is, right? Now. And some right here too. <laughs> oh, the one. Yeah, that is crazy. Look at that, guys. That is just crazy. Oh yeah, it was right in front of me too. Like Scott was saying, oh my God, that just, I think that's game set match right there. But let's see how far it went through. Definitely all the way through the next bag. Into the third. Didn't quite pass through. Let's see if we can find it. Oh, yep, it's right here at the top. Real warm. Oh, that's good size to that. You guys can see that. Didn't mushroom out nearly as much, but it sure did expand. What are your thoughts on that one, Scott? Yeah, there's a lot of material left there. So what we see from that is that there's some continuity to this bullet when it got passing through, and that's what made it keep passing through. The 243, maybe there's another type of bullet that we could have been using in that that would have passed through similarly, but this bullet specifically held together. We got a good amount of uh, we've got a good amount of material left you know, for that pass through and out the other side. And that's really what you want. This is actually the type of bullet that I took my deer with this year. And I was able to line two doe up at the same time, take both with one shot. And what we see right here, what's illustrated here with how much continuity there is left to this bullet, this is why it was able to cleanly pass through the first one and humanely take the second one also. So that's what you're looking for. You want to have uh, mass left over, not just those shards. Definitely. All right. Uh, I don't even think we need a tiebreaker for that one, guys. That's game, set, match, 308. Um, but like all the other uh, guns we use, every gun serves its purpose. 308, this one just definitely outperformed the 243 today. Sorry. Uh, you agree with that one, Scott? Totally agree. All right. Um, one thing we were talking about as well, the reason why that uh, 243 went, or yeah, the 243 had probably the highest velocity we've tested so far, correct? Yeah, significantly higher velocity. Okay. I was using a shorter barreled 243, also a shorter barreled 308 today, mm -hmm. but even with the shorter barrel, 20 inch barrel, I believe, that's still got a velocity somewhere near 3,000 feet per second. Of all the things that have been tested so far, that's the highest velocity with the seven millimeter Magnum being second. The seven mag would also produce the same type of velocities used in a lighter shell but i believe it was 180 grain shell that was used or right around there 170 yeah, 175 i do believe so the velocity is down a little bit on that but velocity is why that bullet came apart if it were running at a little bit lower speed it may have mushroomed out and looked similar to this one but that higher speed when it makes that impact and it hits anything a little bit solid it tends to fragment that's why that shot placement is important like we talked about earlier always all right everybody it's david spider monkey 2a give us a like maybe share this video hope you subscribe 
Tune in for the last matchup. We got the 30-06 for 6-5 Grendel. I want to know what you think is going to happen on that one. Should be interesting.